Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Anyagolu, and this is the point in the show that I introduce our guest analyst who is here for the rest of the program and who will give us her personal take on the news and issues of the day. And tonight, I'm joined here in the studio by the journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Eco, who is constant in her assessments of the political developments in this country. Let's start with, good to see you, by good the way. Good to see you, too. Let's start with uh, Debo Ologuaba, who is the PDP National Publicity Secretary. Guns blazing at the um, the government, but also making the case for their their case in court in the U.S. Yeah, I think he was measured. Mm. He made some good points about transparency and the right of the public to know. And then, of course, he cleverly dodged the question that you posed about whether this uh, gives them some political advantage, mm. I mean, the party. Which it clearly does, of if, course. if they get something out of it. Uh, of course. The point is that, you know, these two old men, the president and al Atiku Ati 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 Abubakar, are, you know, in their last legs, mm. and it seems like they are going down and dragging the entire country with them. Um, why do I say that? I mean, this scandal, University of Chicago, no, Chicago State University yeah. is of monumental proportion and it's no longer political titans washing their linen within the shores of Nigeria. It has gone global for everybody to see. Absolutely. I think it's profoundly depressing for some people. And the thing is, it doesn't in any shape or form do us a favor as Nigerians. It sort of feeds into the narrative that Nigeria is a nation of scammers, although that's a sweeping generalization. There are so many Nigerians locally and in the diaspora doing great mm. things, uh, talented, uh, working on great jobs and you know this is and doing it legitimately exactly course, yeah. this is a solid affair and it's not good at all for us mm. no I absolutely I, I agree with you um, he also obviously rounded on um, the the government for what they've achieved so far but I mean he would say that wouldn't he he's from the opposition of course I mean opposition I, I think at the, at the end of the day people still think that the PDP hasn't been a formidable opposition mm. that they should <laughs> have a party that produced uh, three presidents from 1999 to 2015 that did relatively well mm. when you look at the party today it's like it's a shadow of its former self it has problems you know internal crisis lack of discipline mm. a selfish ambition of some of its big wigs which has cost it um its place and status and 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 what it is so um it will take a long and difficult journey mm. for them to turn around if there is any chance of doing that. Yes, let's move away from that and um, assess Professor Usman Yusuf, who spoke very passionately there. You can see he really feels what, what he says, but uh, he was talking about the, the kidnap, sort of the ransom franchise, if you like, that's taking place, particularly in his part of Nigeria, which is northern Nigeria. And he was clearly very, um, incensed by what is going on and and the sense that enough isn't being done but that's an old story isn't it yes i mean it's good that you invited him mm. he, he's from that region and he's been doing quite a bit of making quite a bit of efforts on this particular issue mm. good points that he made is that um it seems like there is lack of continuity and that the government hasn't learned anything however when you look at this entire episode um i do not know if it's for tweeters mm. or out of design that quite a number of the ministers in this administration are from that part of the country in charge of security. So for instance, a quick rundown. The Minister of Defense, Mohammed Abubakar, is from Jigawa State. He is a former governor. The Minister of State for Defense, uh, Belo Matawale, is from Zamfara, the worst hit, yep. and he's former a former governor. governor. Yep. And then the Minister of Police Affairs, Ibrahim Gaidam, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well. He's from Yobe State, a former governor. The Minister of State for Police Affairs is a woman, um, uh, I think Iman Suleiman Abubakar Ibrahim. She is from Plateau State, also in the north. And then the National Security Advisor is from um, Adamawa State, Nuhu Ribadu. Um, he was a former police officer and also worked at his, as the pioneer chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission under President Olusegun and Basanjo. So he has dealt with crime locally and internationally. So you have this team 
of people with experience. Mm. All these governors have faced this daily when they were governors, so they know it, what is going on. They have um, the understanding. The point, though, is, or the question becomes, do they have enough in the tank to use just in the other Adams statement or words? Do they have enough in the mm. tank to pursue this issue? Do they have genuine intentions? Do they have the capabilities? If they do not, are they secure and confident enough to hire the right capabilities to tackle this problem? Mm. They're all from the region, so everyone is watching them. Uh, a point that needs to be made, though, particularly in this um, instance of what has happened recently with that federal university at Guzau and, Guzau and the, um, the abduction of, of people there, is that some have been rescued and some have escaped. So that, to, to, to some extent, suggests that immediate action has been taken and that there is some good news there. But I suppose the idea must be that these attacks um, must be prevented from happening in the first place because, I mean, this country really can't endure much more of that. Yeah, of course. I mean, this professor was talking about whether these um, security officials read the handover notes. Mm. Yes, it is a temporary relief that some have been, um, ha have been released, but there are so many others. And there might be risk of more happening. I mean, apart from the school kidnaps, there's also um, the railways that have been attacked, uh, people disappearing in, in homes, in farms, people cannot go to farms. So these um, challenges are persistent and ongoing in that part of the country. Of course, there are also problems in other parts, but the North is worst hit, mm. and the, the security officials have their jobs cut out for them, and people are looking forward, really, for things to turn around for them in that part of the country. And what do you think about his um, solution to that problem? He said it's got to be a combination of things, including negotiating with them. He rightly noted that it is a complex problem, that it is in no way simplistic. And there's a lot of uh, things in the pot. Sometimes you actually wonder whether the people that are doing the job are genuine mm. or sincere about tackling this problem. There is so much money that is in poured into this security industry. Mm. And there's also so much money being made by these so-called bandits or whoever. Where are they coming from? And why, they also seem to be sponsored because of the type of weapons they are using. Is there no way to locate weapons or stop uh, you know, the monies where they are coming from? Is there sincerity? Nobody knows. There's a lot going on in that sector. Again, you know, they have their people now in the security sector largely so i think that there are people also upset on ground if mm. they do not do something about it I, I think people are going to be very angry well i think after this i need a drink <laughs> <laughs> me too i thank need a God drink it's friday <laughs> it is thank friday you, thank you very much indeed always appreciate your analysis dr constance ikoku is a journalist political affairs commentator and a rise news analyst thank you and have a good weekend thank you charles that's it for this edition of Arise Primetime. Join us again next week from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.